Hey, what's going on, Coach Luca here? So, what I'm gonna do today um, is kind of go through a, a, a not just a protocol, but like pretty much some things that you can do to improve and get you out of low back pain. Now, like give you an example. So this is, uh, you know, I've had some history of some serious history of, of low back pain, a bad injury about eight years ago, and so like last week I was traveling a ton. I was on planes and cars all the time. Uh, not a lot of sleep. Had my own summit, and so. I got it flared up and not only flared up, I had like some protective tension and my whole back spazzed out and like off, like straight from sitting um, at an event. And it was, it was pretty bad. Uh, like I said, it was pretty bad. But so what, like what I wanted to talk about is like, you know, back pain is so different from a, from a standpoint of what's causing it. Right. And so first of all, I'm not a doctor, a physical therapist, nor do I play one in a TV series. So let's just be clear on that. Um, but, you know, but I've been around the best of the best in the world when it comes to this and, and, and study from them and obviously having my own experiences. So I'm gonna run you through kind of like this, some things you can do, right, to, uh, to make you feel better. Because first of all, you know, like when, when you're in back pain, one of the things you wanna do is you wanna move, right? Um, even though sometimes when it's very acute, acute meaning like when you, you know, if you've ever blown out with your back, whether it's go tie a shoelace and you spaz out, right? The first thing that you wanna do is just lay somewhere and, and do nothing, which, hey, maybe for the first, you know, day, hours, whatever it may be, might be a good idea. Now, for, if, if you do anything like that, go see a professional, you know, a physical therapist, a great physical therapist would be my first recommendation uh, because they can diagnose, they can help, they can they work on you, different soft tissue therapies. So for instance, for me, I, when I was in Boston, I got dry needling done and actually that made everything better and then from there we started moving. So it's important that you have the understanding of something happens acutely, like go get it worked on. Now I've been in scenarios where I've had things happen and I couldn't get to, uh, for instance, a PT until the next day, two days, whatever it may be. So I'm gonna run through what I you know, did and continue to do if I have stuff going on to make me feel better, to also essentially rehab, right? And, uh, and stuff I'm gonna show are things that are safe, you know, uh, most people can do, like word of advice, if you're doing anything and it's making it worse, stop instantly, right? Uh, if you're doing drills and it's not making it better, you know, you could go to a different drill. But once again, because I'm not here to tell you guys um, that I would say there's, there's one thing that's gonna fix everything. There's just things that will help out. So first, what we're gonna do is go through a bunch of stuff that will I will create a release, right? Because what, what happens when you uh, throw your back out, you have stuff going on, you have protective tension, right? Your low back gets super tight, your hip flexors usually get tight, your obliques get tight, your QL, right? There's gonna be different things. Your hamstrings tighten up, different things are gonna tighten up. My first thing always to do in this is like breathing, right? And this is drills that like you can do, I'm completely safe on the floor. I put this pad here because this is, you know, can simulate a chair or a couch at home. If I was in a hotel room, like this is what I would do. And from here, what I would do is slide in pretty good so I'm at least at 90 degrees with, um, with my hips or even a little bit past. But like, you know, we wanna be in a place where your hip flexors are kinda in like this almost squatty position, right? And I'm relaxing here. And from that position, what I'm gonna wanna do is, is completely breathe out all the air and get my rib cage down. So right now, most people would be extended a little bit. You could actually put the hand under their low back. And so this is a relaxing, safe position. And I'm gonna exhale through my mouth fully. So get all the air out, which would look something like this. So there's no more air in my belly. Okay, my rib cage is down. Now I'm gonna blow, I'm gonna take in air through my nose and try to get it really deep into my pelvis, right? Into my groin, pretty much. And a lot of times this will be short, so I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna keep breathing out, keeping my rib cage down. Notice, I put my hands here because I wanna give some tactile cueing to when I breathe in to try to blow the air in deep into my kind of my pelvis, my groin area, and blow that up. And the thing is, I'm gonna if when you keep breathing, you're gonna be able to take in more and more air. And what's gonna happen is as you're blowing out, like I would say, 
air into that low back, that 360 degrees, in that position, a lot of times the air will actually kind of mobilize your discs a little bit, right? It'll create some space and it'll create a release. Now, so this is one, it gets you out of, I would say, the parasymp uh, the sympathetic mode, sort of fight or flight. Because of the air expanding, you're actually going to get a lot of times some mobilization going on. And also, it's, it can take you from, like I said, high tone to, to getting some things loose. Now, this is, first of all, it's a relaxing drill. Um, it's a great thing to do. It's working on your breathing, which most people don't. When you fully exhale, guess what has to turn on? Your abs, right? If, I, if I'm going, there's no way your abs can't work. And the first thing that turns off, one of the, the things that turns off or turns down, they don't completely turn off, is your abs. Like if you've ever hurt your, um, your back, you notice that like when you're doing a drill, your abs don't really kick in much. Other stuff is, is tight and takes over, right? So how do we get abs to work? Right, this breathing drill is a great drill. So safe positions, right? Breathing stuff. So this would be one drill. Another one would be uh, in this quadruped position. You guys may have seen me do this before. Where the same thing. I'm gonna push this away, and then I can I can manipulate where I'm gonna drive air, right? So I can either be in this position and push the ground away, and from here exhale. and do the same thing where I'm blowing air either into the belly and then also into my upper back. Now, the reason I bring these up is some, some things depend on also, you know, what, made, what, what is uh, making your back hurt. For instance, you know, this is just a simple, obviously, test that you do at, you know, PT is, hey, put your hands, to, uh, feet together and, you know, start sliding down. And you see either people go, oh, that's it. This is where it's super tight. This is where it's super tight. Okay, I can't go anymore, right? And that would be a test, right? and you test and retest. And the, the second one would be, okay, now extend your hips. So can you extend your hips and can you, can you go far back? How far back can you go? And you know, also see where the pain is coming from. Is it in flexion? Is it an extension? Is it in both? But those are really, really great drills that you can do, like I said, that drive air. If it, turn on the abs, drive air into different places that, that will help out, okay? Um, a couple of, of, of things that like, I've got a whole bunch of tools here and I'm not going to run through doing everything for a really long period of time, but this is one of those things where uh, you, know, you kind of like test things out, meaning I already know some things are going to work for me just because I've been through this, but you know, the, the soul right is great for soul ass release and this is one thing that you literally will put on your hip flexors, like right where your hip bones are and you just go into that position and just relax and breathe. And it will usually like start, imagine it sinking in into your hips, right? You're sinking in, you're sinking in, you're sinking in. And you're just staying, I would say two minutes, three minutes, just breathing through it. Uh, it's phenomenal. Now, like let's say we're gonna do this and as you were doing this, that made you spaz your back. You wouldn't do that, right? And you go like, all right, I'm not, I'm not gonna go with that. Um, the other thing, like I love this ball, the, the, the mobility wide ball, but what, what tends to happen when you have tight, you know, tension in your low back or, or you, you know, you threw it out or something like that, the, the rotators of the hips will start spazzing out. So your adductors, glute meat, glute max. So using the ball to release those, once again, you know, like you're on the floor, you're safe, you find these positions and it might be uncomfortable. Like there's a difference between, you know, uncomfortable and like you're driving sciatic pain or something that's unbearable. Like you don't want to, you don't want to do that. But I would get into positions now, like for instance on glute knee, and just get some release on those rotators, right? And find even different positions. So TFL, glute medius, I even go into the glute max. And this is where you kind of like can play around and find those. I mean, I instantly know what's a tight spot or not, right? And I'm in a kind of side plank position too, so this is, you know, I'm turning some of the abs on here, okay? And I just do release on that. The other release that I do, uh, I do like this ball. For some, it might be a little bit much, too much tension, but gut release, so what I'm gonna do is actually roll on this area 
then go into area, and then go on to the side and just do some breathing here. So I'll give you an example. So if I'm here, ooh, whoo, right? Which tells me I should be doing this right now. A little bit of gut release. And like I said, I'm only about a week away from, not even a week away from having my back really tweaked out. So this is a good time to be showing you guys this, right? So right there, I feel a ton of tension. I just hang out there, let it release. And you'll know, you'll know. And it's, you'll know that it's tension like a muscle tension, right? And you're just breathing in and out, then going to the side. Watch, I'm gonna roll to the side. Put our oblique. And get my hand over. And at the beginning, you might have a bunch of like protective tension, and that's why you're just gonna breathe here, right? So, and you like, there is no golden rule for this, right? I just go to different positions where I'm feeling that tension, and I just breathe, right? And then I roll back across that abdomen, right? Find those spots, and I do the same thing on the other side, okay? And notice, like, everything is on the ground now because ground-based stuff is just safer, right? I, I mean, think about it. When you blow your back out, like, this you can do, right? But even walking sometimes might be tough. And, and actually, crawling is a great pattern to reinstill stuff, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So if, if, you know, if this is either you don't have it or it's too much, uh, a med ball or a softer med ball, too, right? We can do that. Just getting those releases. And imagine you're trying to put, like sink the ball into your body, right? To, to get that release. So those are some, uh, some things that we wanna do, is do the breathing drills first, right? And then from there, do some, because that might release a lot by itself. From there, we're gonna do uh, some soft tissue release. So I like to release the rotators, QL, you know, quads, We've done a video before where I'm doing a body tempering on the quads and hamstrings and adductors, which I, I would still do and have somebody do on me. Um, but we've shown that before, so we're not, we're not gonna go into that. And then from there, th like, I'm a little trying to go through kind of like this sequence of uh, how I would do things. Um, the cat camel, once again, where, you know, you guys have seen the kind of cat camel where you're doing this. Um, and one of the things that the philosophy behind, like, an injury, just any injury, like an ankle injury too, for instance, you sprain your ankle, people will say, oh, ice it, you know, rest, ice, this, that, the other. We actually wanna get it moving as soon as possible through ranges of motion where there's no pain, right? Or some discomfort, but we don't wanna go through painful parts. It's the same thing with the back, right? Most people will hurt their back and then just lay around and actually won't get better because other stuff is gonna, you know, your core down regulates, start getting stiff, you're not moving around, but the back, should be moving as soon as possible, right? And the cat camel is a great, like I said, safe drill. What I like to do is use the band to give me some feedback because, and just in general, I like, I like this for, I would say for the cat camel drill. And this is gonna give me feedback as far as like where I wanna push away. You know, so when we're talking about the lower back, I'm gonna push the ground away and keep my upper back flat but engaged, right? So my shoulder blades are gonna go apart and that's gonna stay there, and I'm gonna let the band pull me down, and then I'm gonna push the band away and round as much as I can. And then it's important that I slowly, eccentrically, right, load it, and let it pull me, pull me in, and then I'm rounding again. So that's where the band comes, like you might not be able to know where you're rounding or not, but if I tell you to push the band away, now you're actually understanding. Right, and I do 12, 15 reps, quite a, quite a bit, and you'd be surprised at how good that can feel a lot of times, right? Because we're getting those discs to like flex and extend, but in a controlled manner, there's not a lot. now. You might feel some, like, almost like stretching going on, and that's okay, right? There's a big difference between if you have, like, massive, you know, pain or, like I said, stuff going right, running down your, your leg or sciatica or something like that. In majority of situations, like I said, this, you'll get done with this and it'll feel better afterwards. So, once again, notice we're staying on the ground right now 
and we're doing a lot of things that are pretty safe, pretty simple to do. Um, and I also want to touch, touch base on like, if you are, for instance, very, very kind of like, it's very acute at that point in time, you know, what are some things that you can do? And so some of the things to drive extension. So if you had an injury where you're flexing, like a great, great thing to do is like this push away where we're down on the ground and I'm just squeezing my butt and pushing away into extension, okay? Like I said, this may be uncomfortable, right? But it's gonna help out. You can also go and hang out just here and breathe, squeeze your butt and breathing and hang out here for two minutes, right? And so if you have like, for instance, a, a, another thing that I like doing is if, if you have sciatica going down your leg, you'd, you'd go with the leg down, meaning the leg down on the side that you feel it. And from here, because like I said, at this point in time, everything can be kind of difficult. Pushing away, getting here, and then just hanging out. Right, and you could actually come down the same way and just opening that up right on that side and see other top leg on top. Because a lot of times you just ha you have to get moving and you have to start opening things up in a you know safe way. Right? So those are all great drills. Now, this is where I, I would say uh, I'm gonna move a little bit and we're gonna go and do hanging. Let's see, like I you know, decompression of the spine has always been, I would say, something that's, that's really helped me out. And uh, once again, every back injury is a little bit different. But what we just did is we were doing breathing, we're doing some soft tissue work, right? we're doing some ground-based things that are going to help out a lot in most cases. Now I'm going to hang, but I'm also going to want to move my hips, right? So I'm going to hang here, and I'll actually probably want to go on a little bit of a higher one. Have feel. Shoot me over here. So usually, if somebody was, you know, I'd, I'd probably give them a box here. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze. I said I'm gonna squeeze this together because, uh, and some people would do this later on. I actually like doing it at this point in time because now I can squeeze and imagine that, like, if I'm trying to push one heel to the ground, another one up, right? So you can see, like, I'm squeezing this together. My right heel is going to the ground. And now my left one is. Now my right. So I'm trying to get those, you know, in a decompressed state, getting those hips to move. And like I said, if you have, you know, kind of like you're not in pain right now, this is a great kind of drill to do as well. So you're using this. Oh man, that feels good. Right? So you're using this, I would say, to get that swivel of the hips and a lot of times you'll feel maybe even an adjustment, something pop, get back into place. And like I said, this, you know, how long can you, you know, it's a little bit of a grip, kind of grip oriented thing, where how long can you um, hold on to something like that? It just, it depends on your grip a little bit. But like I said, even 20, 30 seconds, if you can go as long as a minute and just keep doing that, it's fantastic. Um, with that said, you know, depending on how you're feeling, I, I love also doing the, when you have a lower bar to, because most of the time what's gonna happen is that the one side that's uh, bugging you as far as your back is gonna be all wound up. External uh, obliques here, QL. And what I love to do is cross over that leg and then lean into the other side. And you could actually be close to something and push away here, right? So. And once I'm in that position, right, once I'm in that position, what am I doing? I mean, one, I'm kind of deloading, decompressing here. I'm, I can push the way into that hip. So I'm pushing into that hip, opening up everything that's usually wound up. And then I breathe, right? So I exhale. And again, try to inhale into this pocket. And you can actually, as I'm breathing, you can feel this kind of pushing out and getting released. And then slowly I'd come up. And you can also do this with TRXs, right? Because think about, this is vertical, but this, this other part, I can go overhead and do the same thing, 
Right now, I'm opening up that, that side, and I can do the same thing. And I would do it on both sides, but like I said, if it's just one side that's bugging, I just do it on that one side. And I, one thing I want to make clear too, you know, you may try to get into these positions and it might not feel like, you know, you might be like, this doesn't feel good, cool, don't do it. Right? That's, I think that's one of those really, really important things that we want to make sure that we have down uh, because it's, it's have feedback, have some common sense, obviously on the side of like, man, this just doesn't feel right. Okay, cool, get out of it, right? So watch as I'm coaching you through this, but at the same time, also make sure that like, if something is, you know, making you go like, I don't know, just don't do it. All right, so we're gonna move back to the floor a little bit. Because we, we did now a lot of, I would say, opening up and releasing and things like that. Now we wanna start, I would say, getting some motion back and turning some things back on. And this is a great drill. You might, might have seen it, like, uh, I actually don't know where I learned it first, but it was probably like from my chiropractor, Dr. P. But it's getting into this safe position again. And um, from here, this is like an adjustment that, that you could do yourself, but it's pushing one knee down and pulling one up, but I'm resisting it, right? So we're gonna get these different forces in the hips, right? So I usually go 15 seconds, maybe even as long as 30 seconds. So I'm pushing this hand down, pulling this one up, and I'm just trying to get those hips resisting. And this shouldn't be 100%. This should be like ramping up to maybe 50, 60%. So you're not going all out here. And then you switch it up and you go other side. This one down, this one up. So like I said, 15 to 30 seconds. I like more on the side of like the 20, 20 plus seconds here. Same thing, not crazy, crazy, crazy hardcore. Okay? And then both, and we're gonna drive those knees up. <sighs> Same thing, not 100%. Right? Just get an activation of the hip flexor. And then once we did that, you can do one of two things, right? Put your hands in between the knees and then squeeze. Bam, and actually you guys probably couldn't hear it, but I got a click and it's adjustment of the pelvis there. And that usually feels really, really, really good. Once again, it's safe. And as I've done that now, now we can drill, because the thing that you lose real quick because of the tension is internal rotation of the hips. Um, and you tend, tend to be like very externally rotated um, when, when your back gets tight. And so we want to bring some of that back. And the way we're going to bring that back or, and work on it is you can put your hands in there. I like the med ball, right, where we're down. And I'm going to try to get my heels apart from each other. Right? I'm going to try to push into the ball and get my heels apart from each other. Ah, keep driving. And I can rep this for five or six, or I can just hold it, get those heels apart from each other. So what I'm doing now is I'm driving that internal rotation. And you see, if you did this at the beginning, when you were you know, tight and wound up, you'd have very little. But now, as we did some of these drills, you see you'll get more and more. And as you get that, it's gonna be very, very helpful because once again, that's gonna help you move better and turn on things that we want to turn on. Now, the next part, um, you know, is part, part of the McGill 3, and I'll show you guys some uh, kind of modifications of how you can progress this, but the McGill 3, like Stuart McGill, one of the, I said, top practitioners for, wrote the books on low back pain. You know, we've had him here at Vigor Ground, uh, phenomenal, obviously, a uh, guy and a person that's taught us a lot about back pain. But the McGill 3 is three different exercises to do every day, and honestly, doing them every day, even when you're not in pain, when you're not hurting, they're phenomenal for improving back performance and getting you out of, out of low back pain. And they're the curl up, the side plank, and the bird dog. And I'm gonna go over those with you guys right now, um, just to, you know, something that you can, just can plug in and show you guys some modifications with. But we'll start with the curl up. And the curl up is very, very simple, where I'm going to lay down on the ground, I'm gonna slide one leg in all the way to my butt. I'm gonna put my hands on my low back, right, and kind of press that into the ground a little bit. And then keeping my chin tucked, I'm gonna curl up and get those shoulders off the ground. 
right, and just pause. So I want to make sure I'm not reaching with my neck. I'm going to roll up. So a lot of people who want to curl up with their neck and reach forward, don't reach forward. And we can do eight to 10 reps per side there. We're turning on abs here. Okay, number two is a side plank. And you know, depending on where you're at, the side plank may not, not be this side plank yet, but might have to be on the knees and have this bend where I'm going to now drive through, squeeze my butt, and you want to make sure that you're driving the ground away, okay? Thinking tall. I'll, I'll, I like to put my hand here so I know my rib cage is down and keep my chest open, right? And like I said, at the beginning that might be it and we're just doing 10, 15, 20 seconds and then we progress. Of course, the harder side plank, longer lever here, okay? But I'm anticipating that maybe you'll have uh, you won't have the capability of doing that, maybe you will. But once again, this is gonna turn things on and certainly make you feel better. What I love is doing the Copenhagen plank, which also turns on our adductors, which is what we wanna do for sure. And you know, whether you were on a chair or something like that, the Copenhagen plank, you can have a shorter lever. Right, so shorter lever, I'd come in here with the knee, because now we have to, we're squeezing our, so we're squeezing our butt, we're driving here, and we're getting the adductor activation, right? Longer lever arm, obviously can mean we're here. I could even make it harder. But once again, this is, this is the one I really, really like, but if you can't do it, you would regress that, okay? And then number three is the bird dog. And we could spend a lot of time even on coaching every single one of these um, you know, you want to make sure you have great form on this stuff because if you don't, you're just like you're, you're training a pattern that's just going to be, uh, I would say, uh, it, it's going to drive more tension into areas that you don't want to, right? So, and, and notice, I say keep the reps low and a quality high. Same thing, planks. Start off with 10 seconds, 15 seconds. You know, don't go like crazy overboard on this, right? And so the bird dog is this where we're in a quadruped position. And I, I would usually take videos of clients just to sh see how they're moving here. And in this position, what we'll end up doing is, so remember, I'm gonna give you kind of quick, like the bird dog is this, right? But let's coach it slow now. I'm gonna engage my core a little bit and push the ground away here. And then what I like to do is slide that back leg so it keeps contact with the ground and then just at the end, lift it up a little bit and reach, okay? And what we're looking for is keeping that rib cage down. Okay, so you're not arching your back, okay? And this should be very slow. And then I'm gonna slowly come back in, and then again. And we wanna, we wanna watch that low back and see that everything is kind of moving from the hips. Okay, and then we go to the other side. I said you do six reps, eight reps, making sure reach back with the heel. And the thing is, I can't actually even see myself right now, and I would actually video. But when you do it right, you want to make sure that you're not losing that rib cage. You're making sure that the rib cage is down, and all the movement's coming from the hips, and you're checking to see that you're not rotating at the hips, right? So I'm going to give you a bad rep here. So a bad rep is when I'm coming here and I'm rotating. You can see that, right? So the bird dog is that drill you do super slow and super engaged and you're retraining the pattern, right? You're retraining the pattern. And so a lot of these will tend to make you feel better. So if right now if we went through the different stuff that went to so far, you'd be moving around better, feeling better. And you can go and test and retest. Now, uh, what, what I like to do with test and retest, this is actually uh, a physical therapy drill that, you know, if somebody did some mobilizations on you, uh, you made some things pop and click and so on and so forth, that the way that you do this a lot of times is, there's, there's three different, there's three different kind of uh, sides to this. Take a half foam roller, it's just an elevated step. You put your med ball in between your knees and you wanna squeeze this and you don't go and reach, right? So now we're reaching, squeezing, and now we're going down. Can we go and touch our toes? And a lot of times, 
you'll do better. Maybe you know you were only able to go get to here at the beginning, but now you can go lower. Okay, and we do that for five reps. Now we squeeze, we squeeze, squeeze the ball because we turn on adductors and we turn our pelvic floor. Right. So if I did it without, you know, we talk, we said that once you hurt your back, this kind of turns off. Right. So now we're squeezing, crushing, crushing, and it's like oh. Now it's way better. And actually, it's even better for me. And we do five reps. And then I do the, the other side too, which is heels down. Squeeze, reach. And which is a drill in of itself, same thing, five to six reps. Because if we can now do that movement without pain, that's great. Now we can pattern it, right? And this is almost like a test retest, meaning I can do the drills and then I can retest. Am I feeling better? Is it, is it clearing this stuff up, right? And if it is, hey, we're on the right track. It means that you have a sequence of things that you can do every day to, to move and feel better, right? And you know, the things that we didn't talk about here is just like super, super basic stuff. Like if you get up from the ground, like any time that your back is bugging you, you don't do this, but you lunge. Right, down into that position, get down into push-up position, on the ground, right? And the same way you get up is you're here. Right, little things like that that make a huge difference. And it's also why we love, you know, crawling patterns when you have, for instance, back pain that you can be on all fours. This is great for turning on core, working hips, right? It's fantastic, and we can do a lot of good things and get us out of that pain. So we've, you know, we've, we've been kind of turning some things off, turning some things on, and we're going to do a little bit more of that in these, uh, these next drills, and because once again, remember ground-based stuff is a lot safer than standing stuff, and even for your brain, like if you can do it on the ground, then you can progress up and then do it standing up. So uh, the, from there, a drill that's great, um, is first of all, you know, if we want to reinstate movement and we just showed kind of like this toe touch drill and how do we activate stuff, you know, the way that you test it even on the ground and like a lot of times if I blow my back out and did something, you know, and my left hamstring spazzes out, you know, we test on the ground and just go, you know, how, where can you get to? I'll give you an example, like right about there, I still kind of get a little icky and you can see, look, watch the difference. So this is my left active le leg raise and I'm really tight right now. And look at my right one. Much better, right? So there's protective tension on my left side. So we can, you know, we can obviously, uh, I would say see this as a, and do a test, right? Now, if I had this, I would say up to the rig and pulled, actually deal, you mind just uh, coming through? I did, I did that camera face like that. So, so imagine that like I'm pulling this and it's attached to a rig, okay? Obviously it's not, but imagine that it is. So now there's this tension and I'm turning my abs on, okay? So I'm turning my abs on. PTs will do the same drill. They'll have you put your hands like this and tell you to push against their hand. So I'm going to do this imaginary like, and look at that. Just turning my abs on. See that difference? This is real time, right? I turned my core on, turned it on, and my leg was uh, able to go higher because that core engagement turns off some of that protective tension. So a drill would actually be, you know, pulling that band overhead and then just doing this drill. Nice and controlled and doing it on both sides, for instance. That is a, a and, and, and once again, you know, as you do this, you'd be able to get to a certain area, and if it gets really, really, really spazzy and tight in your low back, you stop right before that, right, and you come back down. Now, the second part of this, another safe drill, is we get into this position that we were in earlier, right, and we do our dead bugs. And our dead bugs would be, you know, we can bring our hands up here, or we can just regress and breathe out and, and reach out while this one pushes up, okay? Come back up, other side. 
and then we could add. Right, because if you think about this position, this is a squat position. We're just laying down. If you think about this position, this is a RDL slash hinge position. Okay, and from there, like I said, we can drill that and already reinstate some of that movement pattern that's bugging us, right? Because if you think about it, I showed you one or two, right? One is the squat, which for instance, I'll give you an example, like I can squat, but the hinge was the one that's bugging me. And like I said, it's already better. Like I said, I'm less than a week out from it being woof, really bad. But now I can use these drills and like test and retest. Now we didn't even go into things like uh, mobilizations and, and uh, like, you know, true, true mobility and things of that nature. Um, I love positional breathing drills. So once we've done all the things that we've done, you know, then going into something like this, some people call this the couch stretch, the 90-90, right? Where we can now go into this position, you know, get our pelvis nice and aligned, squeeze this butt cheek, pull this, this heel back to get it this engagement, and here, now just breathing, right? So, so instead of for time, we're doing it for breaths. So we're opening up the hips, but then we're also, like I said, creating that tension in those end ranges. Um, you know, an advanced one would be now coming over here and it's like literally hanging out for two minutes and opening up the sides and breathing, right? So those are our positional breathing drills. But the thing that I didn't do, not to say that it, you know, it doesn't have its place because it does, because my philosophy is if you can move without pain or, you know, if it's uncomfortable, sure, but like without pain, you should move. So things like adductor rock backs, right? So when we're here, you know, mobilizing the adductors that usually will wind, uh, wind up. This is great, right? Can we move here and do 10, 15 reps? Keep good engagement. Can we now stay in this position and get some thoracic mobility going? Great, right? We, we showed bird dogs. Like what else, can we crawl or be in this position? You know, make it a little bit harder. Let's do that, right? So, and of course, then you have, can we get, you know, into this position without pain? And if you can, great, hang out here, right? And then switch it up. Notice, I can be down on my knees, I can regress this. <sighs> okay? So, my, my point is that I kind of use that foundation of what we just went through, and then, the mobility drills that I've done a ton of videos on, you know, if you can do them at this point in time then without pain, great. Also stability drills, right? Some of this is a mix of it, obviously, because we do our core drills, that's stability, it's core stability, right? Hip stability, when we're doing our, I would say standing, you know, we're, we're hanging onto a rig, doing like our end range isometrics, right? That's hip flexor, stability, right? Hip stability. So whatever you can plug in, from after that foundation of the things that you've already seen, do it. Movement is, is medicine, right? That's the, that's the thing that you have to think about. And, um, you know, once again, there's no black and white necessarily because for me, if I have a flexion base, right, so if I have an issue kind of going here, you know, doing the McKenzie drills and pushing my back away and creating some decompression throughout the day makes a huge difference. Or if I'm sitting in a chair, and just lifting myself up from a chair, decompressing, hanging from a bar, decompressing, right? Doing that often will make a huge difference, okay? So this is, like I said, these are things that I could go on for forever and ever and ever. These videos kind of get long, but hopefully they give you some insight and ideas and like some philosophy be behind, you know, what has worked for me. And like I said, this is stuff that I've learned from the best of the best of the best and that you can use. And like I said, these are safe things uh, you know, using common sense, of course, on top of it, and then combining it with other things that I've shown that, you know, may be kind of like the next step, the level two uh, from getting you out of, of that back pain. But hopefully that's helped out a lot. As always, hey, leave some comments. We appreciate you watching this, using it, giving us some feedback, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.